need nasiha for a young Salafi who wants to settle in the West due to the financial crisis in Pakistan with the intention that he'll stay there for a few years earning money enough to return to Pakistan with a stable finance and then he'll seek knowledge and do ibadah with peace of mind this is a youth who hasn't got the foggiest who doesn't have any idea of what he is putting himself into when do you find any text of the kitab and the sunnah that says that you can migrate from the lands of Islam to the lands of kufr because you fear poverty financial crisis in Pakistan what financial crisis in Pakistan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for you food if you are looking for riches then know that that which has been written for you will come to you as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Jibreel came to me and he said O oh Muhammad tell your ummah to seek their worldly gain in moderation to seek it in moderation for indeed they will not die up until that which has been written for them will come to them so what has been written for you will not die up until that which has been written for you 50,000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth you will not die up until that reaches you my brother going to the west will not make you rich it will make you a taxi driver it will not make you rich right and that is a notion that has been driven into you because you're watching too much youtube and too much social media you are deluded and you are delusional if you think that you as an ignorant youth because you said at the end then I'll come back and seek knowledge and do ibadah so you're not you're going to withhold you're going to stop seeking knowledge and you're going to stop ibadah so you can go and make money and then you'll decide at what point you've made enough money to come back to Pakistan or come back to a Muslim country this is not the guidance of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that he is free from those who live amongst the unbelievers he is free bari'un from those who live amongst the unbelievers it is not permissible in the sharia for you to do to go and live amongst the unbelievers in the lands of the non-muslims if you want to make money stay here strive in seeking knowledge make ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then work to earn that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for you because you can that which you can earn over there can be earned here there are rich people in Pakistan who make money every single day and there are poor people in Pakistan that they work hard every single day and they remain poor because that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for them so wherever you are my young brother wherever you are my son what is written for you will come to you all you have to do is seek the aid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strive and take the means that will put food onto your table do not have these high ambitions that I want to be rich that you chase the dunya I just want riches I want riches look how you've put the deen second I want to settle for a young Salafi Allahu Alam if this Shab is even a Salafi Allahu Alam because this is not the thinking of a Salafi that I'm going to concentrate on the dunya and get rich then I'll go and seek knowledge and make ibadah that is not the manhaj of the Salafi Shab the Salafi youth seeks knowledge and he makes ibadah of Allah and he strives and he takes the means to feed his family, his mother, his father, his children. If that means studying, then he studies. Meaning at an at a institute of learning wherein he is not compromising his deen. Or that he starts a vocational course. Maybe he does a management course or project management. Or that he learns how to do plumbing or build a house. And how many people I've seen in Pakistan that just they start by buying and selling a car 
They start by, by buying a car, so they work hard up until they can buy their first car. And within three years, they're millionaires. Because that's how the car market is in Pakistan. Because Allah has blessed them, they took the means. They think, they speak to intelligent people who have done it before them, and they take their example. How many people I've seen? I've seen a painter. A painter who began by painting walls in people's houses and just earning, you know, maybe a thousand, two thousand, a thousand rupees a day. Then he thought to himself, I can paint a whole house, but not by myself, I'll gather a team. So then he gathers the team that work under him. And he's meticulous that they do everything right. Now, he gets so many calls from people that come to him, that they want the whole of their houses and complexes painted by him and his team. And what did he begin with? A thousand rupees a day, which is... I don't know what's that in English money, five pounds, six pounds a day, something like that. Or in today's money, about three or four pounds. To now, to now, lux, you know, hundreds of pounds a day. So money can be made in a country like this, but do not compromise your seeking of knowledge and your ibadah of Allah. Don't put that on the back burner and then say that you're Salafi. What kind of a Salafi turns the man that you seek the dunya? Before you seek the deen That's the way of Salafiyyah The way of Salafiyyah is That you study the deen You make ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That you stay in the lands of the Muslims That you work hard and you strive And you take the means And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Will give you financial stability It doesn't mean that you may become rich But you'll have contentment of the soul You'll have contentment of the soul Just as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said, لَيْسَ الْغِنَى كَثْرَةُ الْعَرَضِ وَلَكِنَّ الْغِنَى غِنَى النَّفْسِ That richness is not by way of having plentiful possessions, but rather richness is the richness of the soul. That's what you should be aiming for, my son, this young Salafi who has been watching too much social media and thinking that the streets of London are paved with gold. They are not. Britain has hundreds and thousands of its population below the poverty line. But that you will not read. You have to go and read their reports to see how it has been reported in the UK that people were going so hungry this year because of the financial crisis that is there. I'm not saying that there is no crisis in Pakistan, there is a crisis. In terms of that it is not easy for a lot of the people to pay their rent or pay their electricity or pay their gas. And that's why Ahlul Khair are here to help them. And the rich people in this country should help the poor. Because that is their responsibility. That is the right that the poor have upon us. If we have some wealth, that we aid the poor. I've heard stories from Wales, from the brothers in Cardiff and elsewhere that you find people living in the United Kingdom that they don't have enough food to eat and they'll start eating dog food because they, have, they have, don't have anything so they find some you know can you give me some food someone gives them dog food and they eat, they'll eat dog food or that they wait in what do, they, what do they call them in those food banks so in the United Kingdom they are food banks that have exponentially increased in every city town and village in the United Kingdom People queuing up for hours Waiting for a bag of shopping Just like you see here sometimes At iftar time Like if you go to F10 We were there the other day And there was a queue That was I'd say it's probably about 50 meters long People lining In a queue And at the front of the queue there's a, there's a, a lorry And the people on the back of the lorry Are giving food parcels Rations For people to have for iftar that's been going on in England for several years now. So when we think about the United Kingdom and you think to yourself, well, those countries... And that's not just the UK. That's Britain. That's Germany. That's France. That's the United States of America. If you speak to the brothers in the US and you ask them about some of the neighborhoods in Los Angeles or the neighborhoods in Philadelphia where people are walking around like zombies... You know, they, they, they're alive, but they might as well be dead. They're living in poverty. 
high on drugs. So when you when you look at the news and when you when you look at you know social media, you start thinking to yourself, well, these are the nations that we should be, you know, trying to emulate and get over there. And that's why you find so many people, migrants, these illegal migrants, that are dying and drowning in the in the English Channel. That they take a little boat, about twenty of them on a little boat, they try to get from France into Britain. And the boat capsizes and you know they all drown, like eight or nine will drown and three children dead. Where have they come from? From Africa, from the Sahal. Travelled all of these thousands of miles to come to this country that they believe that they're going to make their riches. And even if they do reach, they put them in centers. And they're confined to these centers up until their application. And sometimes they're there for three, four, five, six, seven years waiting for the up until that time they're not allowed to work or to receive any benefits or go and make these so called riches, my son. You are delusional. If you want to come out of this delusion, then you need to seek knowledge. Get your priorities right. Your priority is Kitab, Sunnah, way of the Sahaba, seek nearness to Allah, make ibadah of Allah, make dua to Allah, get married. Get married to a young Pakistani sister. Have children And Allah will provide for you Don't fear Allah provided for your parents Allah provided for their parents And their parents And Allah will provide for you Do you believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not give? That he is unable? This is the mentality That is being propagated by the West To our countries your countries are poor, run down, underdeveloped, which they may well be. But you know what? We have sukoon. We have tranquility. And we are comfortable here because we know, inshallah, that the future generations of our children living in the lands of Islam, that they will hold on, inshallah, to their deen. And they are not being, you know, confronted with these atheistic ideas. And this dunya mentality as if the akhirah is, you know, something that you think about when you're about 60 or 70. And for this period of time, just amass the dunya, amass the dunya. You will not find tranquility, no matter how much wealth that you amass. When the son of Adam gets a valley of gold, what does he want? He wants another valley. And nothing will fill his belly except for the dirt of the earth. Because once you get one million, you get a valley of gold, you want another valley of gold. You want a, you got a mountain of gold, you want another mountain of gold. You ain't coming back. Ya walad, you ain't coming back. My son, you ain't coming back. Allahu alam. Stay here. Build your life here. Strengthen your country. If you have, you know, we don't need a brain drain from Pakistan. We need intelligent, driven people, religious, upon their deen who love the lands of Islam, to stay here and build their country. Why are you going to go to England and build theirs for? You go into any hospital in the United Kingdom, and all you see is foreigners. Wallahi. Ask anyone who lives in England, or in Britain. The, the head nurse of every ward, she'll be from Africa. She'll be from Malaysia. She'll be from, you know, Indonesia. She'll be from Nigeria. You go to any maternity ward, you'll see all of the different people. Why? Because they're draining those poor countries and taking the most skilled of them and bringing them to the West. And what are those countries left with? Nothing. And these people are dying to go over. I don't say that you can't go over and learn a skill and come back. You can and you should. If they have a skill that you can learn, go over there, you learn a skill, you stay there for a year, and you go and study so you are now you're taking a, a sabbatical or something or you're taking a year out to go and study some of the skills that they have and then come back and benefit your country no harm and you find that happening for example with the Gulf countries that they will send people out there to learn you know technology and engineering and come back and benefit their countries the problem with poor countries like Pakistan is a lot of people go out there and they fall for the glitter. 
and they glamour and they don't want to come back. So they're paying their you know their thirty five percent taxes and forty percent taxes to the British and to the English and Pakistan gets nothing. And Pakistan gets nothing, Malaysia gets nothing, Indonesia gets nothing. Nigeria gets nothing, Morocco gets nothing because all the highly skilled people when they go to Canada they want to stay and when they go to America they want to stay because now they make a little bit of money we're going to stay there and they don't come back so my son get your priorities right Barakallahu feekum wa subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka